Hi guys, this video will cover how to wire and set up a doubled in sat nav head unit. Here I have the Avic F860 BT. This will be a similar setup to anything you can expect for any Sony satellite navigation, Alpine satellite navigation, any app radios. They all follow a similar setup in terms of the wiring loom that would connect through to your main vehicles at wiring that would have been attached to the back of your head unit. The whole purpose for why I've done this video is because these types of head units are quite a large investment for someone that cares about music in their car. They retail from between 300 to up to 650 um, pounds. Um, I'm in London so that's the currency and I expect it to be a similar ratio for anyone in the US or other regions. So I'll get into it now, um, show you a bit of the basics about how to wire these things up so you don't end up parting with a further $100 or £100 just to get this installed in your vehicle when it's relatively quite straightforward and simple. Okay guys, the back of your head unit will look something like this. I'll run through a few of these different points that are most important for a basic setup. If you want to go further then you may need to look at the instruction manual but to find the connections for each piece that would go into the back of here, each connector rather, it will be pretty straightforward. This will be your satellite navigation antenna input. This is your rear audio out, your USBs. Here are some of the controls for things such as amplifiers, reverse cameras. Here is your main Pioneer loom. Now that will come with this actual head unit when it's supplied. That is pretty easy to identify and you won't even need an instruction manual to find out where to fit that connector. This is a fuse for that piece. This here is your stalk control input. Now this is quite important. When you order your cabling, you want to make sure you get the right one. Pioneer have their own types. Sony have their own types. Alpine have their own types and all the different manufacturers. So when you order your stock control, make sure you opt for the right one. Next to that, here you have your auxiliary out. So if you want to connect something like an iPod, your phone, just to play music directly, this is the cable that you need for that. Again, one is not supplied with this head unit. You may need to have your own, but they're very easy to source on eBay, Amazon, and places like that. This here is your amplified antenna connector for radio FM AM signals. That's quite important that you get, again, the right one for your that adapts to your car and is wired appropriately into the loom. And here, which is slightly difficult to see, but this is for your microphone. So this particular head unit and some of the other Pioneer head units have a Parrot Bluetooth equivalent setup whereby you would put in a microphone, connect that, and then every time you receive an incoming call, you would select yes on the screen. And then all your car speakers will immediately turn into an earpiece and you can speak directly towards the microphone, which is usually positioned in front of your steering wheel on your visor, etc. And then you get almost like that BMW iDrive or, you know, that, that sort of experience when you're on the phone with someone. So it's, it's quite good um, in that manner, which is a useful uh, feature to have. So that, that's I pretty much covered this. I'm not going to go into any more detail. Anything you want to know about this or any fittings are pretty easy to find because they're very unique. You can't really get many confused. So please look at your instruction manual. I'm not going to go into any further detail with this. Okay, guys, these are two accessories you can get in your box with your Pioneer head unit. So this is the microphone and this is the satellite navigation antenna. Satellite navigation antenna is magnetized on the actual antenna head at the bottom. So if you connect this to any metal objects within your car, it will stay there and it will be quite secure. It's a very strong magnet. This is a difficult cable to replace. So be very careful in how you use it and always leave it with a good amount of lag so it's never caught or snagged anywhere. If you're going to install it yourself, of course. And the key thing to remember about this is this cable is extremely expensive to replace. You will find cheap copies on eBay, Amazon, but I don't personally think it's worth the risk because putting in a cheap £10 unit like this could damage, if it's a fake, of course, could damage your head unit and it's, it's not really worth it in the grand scheme of things. To try and get one of these in London or in the UK, there's only one supplier that supplies it and they charge £50 per loom. This, on the other hand, is very easy to replace. You'll find loads of copies and there'll be originals on even places like eBay because the microphone technology, again, it's been out quite a while. This particular unit is very, very good. This is one of the newer models. Um, this picks up sound very well, regardless of where you position it in front of the driver, be it behind the steering wheel, on the dashboard, above, near your visor. They're all good places and it picks up sound and, and transmits sound quite well. The cable is nice and thin too, so it's very good and very easy to conceal. So it looks like a very stock installation overall, which is, I'm sure, most of us want. Key thing, another point just to remember about this satellite navigation head unit is make sure when you do install it, if you install it underneath your dashboard, you make sure there are no metal sheets or objects sat above it. And 
it's it's got a good view a good clear view and there's only plastic covering it between the windshield and itself um, providing you install this in front of your car because when you go down the ground car parks or in tunnels you might experience some sort of loss of signal and it's not really useful um, in the grand scheme you want to try and avoid that as best as you can okay so this is the stereo loom or the wiring loom separated into two or three pieces so the first piece is this piece here this is the connects to loom so this I bought on eBay separately to this which was supplied with the Pioneer head unit and separately to this boosted or amplified AM FM radio antenna so these are the three pieces the connects to the Pioneer main power and I guess speaker loom and then the amplified antenna loom so I'll start here with this now this particular piece is something I bought from eBay now this this block here is the main block that will plug into the actual loom that comes out of your car which would have been directly connected to your previous stock head unit if you had one in there already now this will change depending on what type of car you have so this will be fine for like a Zephyr, Corsa, Astra, Insignia they will have the same connector it then sends it, I guess the main wires down in here and this brings through everything you could possibly need from speed pulse, reverse signal, handbrake signal everything comes through here including the speaker wires for your main door speakers that then goes into two blocks. This block here separates into what basically turns out to be your stereo controls. So it will take data from the voxel, put it through here every time you select a change of track or circle through your radio or volume. That then goes into this cable here, which is quite important, and I've stressed this a few times in my other videos and previously. This cable is a is a further option to buying this main loom here. Now this is for Pioneer head units only. It will differ for any Sony, Alpine or Kenwood good to make sure you get the right one um, and it clips in and out of here it's very secure doesn't fall out easily and I can't remove this one hand so I'm not going to take that apart here and show you this block is then what you would see in the back of normal even single in head units so if anyone trying to install a single in head unit using this video you still can you still need this connector it's only this loom that will differ and this is head unit specific and will come with your head unit so if this is for a single in user don't worry about this for the moment just focus here this pink wire gives you your speed pass signal. A lot of people, my uncle and one, some of my friends included, have been misled to, to basically be told that this is going to require extra labor, manual work, etc. Just to go and find this cable. That is not true at all. It comes directly through the data that's applied from the car into the head unit and is even split into a separate lead that you can basically clip in and out with one of these connector pins. This here is your reverse signal input, so every time, you, whether you've got manual or automatic, you put your car into reverse, that will basically send a signal through to your head unit, and then if you have a reverse camera or reverse cameras set up, it will show that on your main screen, so that's a useful thing to have, and again, this is a plug and play, and this is for grounding your head unit, but I've grounded mine in a different way, because the way that these head units, especially Pioneers, are set up, they're different laws in different countries, the US and the UK have them, whereby they restrict you from using the head unit when the car is in motion it knows that the car is in motion because you've got your speed pass connected so it expects a grounded signal to go through to the head unit to then unlock things like the map controls if you connect it to here you cannot bypass this um, I wouldn't recommend that anyone does but I did for my head unit and I'll show you how I did that when I move on to this loom here so there will never be anything connected here but this pink wire maps into my loom here and uh, this is even marked on the Pioneer head unit over here if I can show you as the car speed signal input so it's pink sorry so it's pink to pink as you can see and then it would be purple to purple here so this is the reverse gear signal so th these two would basically connect together so I'd connect those two pink wires together and then I'd connect these two purple wires together and that pretty much every time I engage my car in reverse the purple wire would it would send a signal through to my head unit and that would basically put up the reverse camera on my screen um, so I can see what's behind me not just using the mirrors but also using the camera the speed pulse this measures every time your tires do a revolution a pulse is basically generated so that will send that through to the head unit so coupled with the satellite navigation antenna and satellite signal it gives a more accurate position so if you're accelerating and speeding quite a bit over a short distance it's not going to affect this head unit and it, you won't experience lag like you did on some of the older Tom Toms and Garmin devices that you may have had um, in your cars previously so it's very accurate regardless of where you are because it takes tire speed as well as the GPS location 
Now that pretty much covers this. This block connects into this block here. Uh, pretty much accurately you can see there's pins in there that will clip into the pins in here. So this would be like speaker inputs and loads of other things. Um, not really necessary to go into too much detail for that. And then the third piece. So this piece here is the amplified antenna unit for your FM and AM signals. It's very important you wire this carefully. So this will have to be selected based on the type of vehicle you have. So again, Vauxhall, any type of VW, uh, Ford Focus, Fiesta, I believe they've got a similar connector because they're both GM cars. This is then the unit that you saw me put into my actual car earlier. And then here, what I have is the blue cable. Now this blue cable is really important because with an amplified head unit, you need to have a 12 volt supply. Now, the reason for why I've connected to the system control or essentially what most of you might recognize to be your amplifier startup unit is because without the amplified signal, you're not gonna get a clean, crisp sound when you switch to your radio signals. Um, so that that's pretty much that. I've crimped this on because I want it to be secure and safe. When I took this to be professionally installed, that, it wasn't done in that manner. Now, this overall loom is very simple and straightforward. There are some poor elements of wiring going on here, like this poor use of electrical tape. That wasn't from me. This was from uh, when my professional installation company in London, they're very well recognized as well, believe it or not, installed my reverse camera. And this is the type of wiring they did when I specifically asked for soldering, but that's another story for another day. Now, a really important thing I want to show you guys, um, for those, especially even in the US, I've seen a lot of devices on eBay and places like that, whereby people are using this cable here, this green cable, which would be connected to like a red block. So if you were to get a brand new unit, you'll see this, a very long cable connected to a red block, and it tells you to connect this cable, the green one, to your, I guess, your handbrake. Now, don't do that. There's no need to take off all those plastics and do that at all. I've cut the cable short, and I've basically tapped into my negative wire. So the red power there, my black cable here, I've basically just... I, I suppose spliced into that wire and that's given it a grounded signal so when I'm actually using my head unit in the car and I want to change I, I know, ask the passenger to change like the details on the sat nav or something they're at freedom to do that whilst my car is still in motion um, it doesn't cause any dropout or any loss of signal and then these two can be repurposed again so if I want to actually attach a speed camera or some other device via the back again you don't want it to drain your battery out whilst it's in park so this is another good thing to do because this particular loom will only give power to your head unit when the car's switched on and fully ignited. Um, so that, that pretty much covers everything here with this loom. Again, this block will connect here. You connect up those two reverse cables, purple and uh, pink is speed pulse. It's labeled on here. It's not labeled on the connects to and, you, and there's no real video there, but hopefully this should help a lot of you guys out there to marry the two things up and connect them. One other point I would like to mention when you're going to install something like this in your car is to make sure that you've got enough room for all this apparatus behind you because typically, and when I say behind you, I mean behind your head unit. This is your main connector that you'll see that will go into your car and that would literally attach directly onto your head unit from this part onwards. Now, if you've already got a double-end head unit there, that, that's pretty much all the space it needs, which is literally just that much. So your car loom would come, plug into here, and that's it. Once you've put in an aftermarket head unit radio, you've got to basically accommodate room for all of this wiring in the back there. And it's quite a lot of stuff to put in there. And you want to make sure you don't affect any of the other controls in your center console. Like, for example, if you've got an older vehicle, something like your air conditioning controls might go because that, that's often set up with a cable. Uh, heated controls, things are very similar. So that's just something that's worth keeping in mind. Again, if you've got a much larger vehicle or you have more space behind your console then that won't be such an issue and largely this stuff should hide away quite well so i hope that was quite useful for you guys again this is just the standard pioneer loom that came with the car so i've it looks quite complex here but it, it honestly isn't most of these wires i haven't changed at all um, this already came connected in terms of the i suppose amplified cable um, for the system turn on it goes straight from the car to the loom speed pulse is supplied through and it comes directly as soon as as long as you've connected these two up and the reverse cable in it, it literally takes seconds to attach this so don't go and spend 125 pounds with someone to go and install this i wasn't really happy in the manner which this had been installed after i'd parted with 125 pounds in cash so hopefully this will be useful for all you guys um, and if, they, if you do have any questions please do ping them through to me thank you for watching